Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this video, we're going to make this gold tone Celtic knot effect in here. Pretty straightforward, but can be a little bit tricky, so pay careful attention to the steps that I'll be talking you through on this one. All right, let's just get this out of the way. We'll start off with a brand new file, so file, new, blank file. And I'll leave this at the default Photoshop Elements size, which is 6 by 4 inches at 300 pixels per inch resolution. Choose OK. And we just have that docked. There we are. So here's our new file. Now we need to have something to begin working with making those shapes. And they're all based on a basic circle. And we happen to have one over here under Graphics. We'll bring that up. Here we are. Here's our graphics. I'll just scroll down a little bit here and get down to where we have some circles, and I'll show you the one that we'll be using. There's this thing, there's this thing, but there's a better one kind of in between, and that's this copyright symbol. So I'll bring that in, just click or double click on that to bring this copyright symbol in. And then click on one of the control handles, and let's set this width to 180, that sets it to 180%, and choose OK. Let's go back to our layers again. So there we are, there's our basic circle shape. Now we need to get rid of this C in the middle, and that's easy to do. First off, go up to that layer where it says Shape 1, right click on that, and simplify the layer. So it's now just a graphic and no longer a shape. Now go to the Magic Wand, and in the Magic Wand tool options down below here, where it says Contiguous, check that. That means everything is touching, so click into the C and now it just looks just that C part and then hit the delete key and that removes that out. You can then deselect that or control D and there's our circle shape. Okay, that's the beginning part right there. We need two of these so let's grab this layer and duplicate the layer just like that and there's our second one. Now as I pull this across to the right it's going to kind of snap into position just like that. It'll snap twice. There's one right in here and another one right out there. On this snap, notice that the center of this circle is on the edge of that circle. And the edge of that circle is in the center of this circle. So you want to have the those two positions matching there. So basically the, the width of this inner shape here matches the you know half the diameter of that circle. So there's that basic shape. Let's now select both of these layers and copy these up here, new layer. So they're now selected and duplicated. Let's now right click and then merge layers. So we've merged this now into one shape up here. We'll be building everything off of this piece and using these to give us the options for building. Now I want to get rid of this outside bit here and the outside bit there. We can just erase that out fairly easily. I'll come down here to this circle shape Hold the control key down and click on the icon for that, and that selects that circle shape just like that. Now to erase this part out here, on this side I want to invert this shape. So go up to Select and Inverse, and now this outside area is selected, which means I can erase this outside bit here. So let's go to the magic wand, and I'll just have mine set at about 65 pixels hard edge. And I'll just come in here and go up to our correct layer there and make sure I'm on your double layer. And we're going to simply erase that away. And I need to hide those so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. So only this one visible, those two hidden. And now simply erase this clean out. Make sure you get the whole thing. Don't leave any little bits in there because they'll cause us problems if you do. And just erase that side. Now I'll do the exact same thing for the other side. Now, interestingly, you can come down and actually select this, hold the control key down, and select that shape without having it visible. So there you go. There's that shape selected. We're still on this layer. 
Again, let's invert the selection, selection invert. So this outside area now is selected. Again, we're still up here, and I can now erase this piece. And just take your time and come around and get this whole thing erased off, just like that. Now, I'm not just hitting the delete key on this because it would also delete that inside bit there, which we need to keep. Deselect or Control D, and there's our brand new shape right there. This is the basic part of our three-part Celtic knot. We need to have three of these. So I'll drag it up there and drag it up again. And I have three of those shapes. I'll just pull these apart. There's the first one, and there's the second one over there. So three shapes. Now to make this easy to understand, I'm going to give each one of these a color. It doesn't matter what color you use. We'll start off here at the top layer, and I'll set this one at a bright red. Grab the paint bucket, click inside the shape. We'll make that one red. Come down to our next layer here. This is the outside one. Let's make this one green. This is the middle of our greens here. Come down a little ways. Again, does, the color doesn't matter. Make that one green. And down to our next shape, let's make this one blue. Let's come into our blues, any old place. And click into our shapes. There we go. Just three colors. Now, take the red one, the right-hand side. I want to rotate this one around. So click on any of the control handles. I always click on the bottom right-hand corner. But it doesn't matter which one you use. Any control handle brings up the transform tool options. Set this at 120 degrees and click on the green check mark. There we go. Let's go to the green shape right here. Click on a control handle and set this one at negative 120, just like that. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to overlap these so that these, this corner here is touching the middle point of that and this corner touches the middle point up here. So I'm just going to kind of drag it up and put it about like that. Let's go to our red one. Go ahead and check the green checkbox. There we are. Let's go to the red one, drag this up and put it just about like that. That's about right. You can now see why I wanted to use these in different colors so that I can see exactly how well the overlap is doing. These don't have to be perfect, but they should be closer than this. So let's go to the green, and using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm just going to kind of nudge that over a little bit and down just a, just a touch. And that looks pretty good. A little, little hair line showing in there, that doesn't matter. So there's our basic alignment. So this point here is about halfway through on that side. So we now have our basic shapes kind of overlapping. Let's back out just a touch here. Now we need to put in our overlaps. We'll start with our blue shape here, our top shape. It should be blue up here and then blue all the way down over to here. Right to there, it should all be blue. So it kind of comes from underneath here and then goes over all of this stuff. So it starts under and then goes over. We'll do that clear around, starting under and going over, starting under and going over. So to get this over bit, what I want to do is I want to erase this little bit here of the red and erase this bit of the green. And it's easy to do. We're on the blue layer right now. Hold the control key down, click on the icon that selects the blue shape. Let's now go to the red layer, grab the eraser tool, and just erase that red bit out. Go to the green layer and erase out that green bit. You can come a little bit past that edge down there, that's fine. So there's that first basic shape. So it's from under and then goes over. We now want to go from under here, that's fine, and then over on this bit here. So the green has to go over the red and the red here. So let's go to our green layer, hold the control key down, click on the icon. That selects that green layer. Notice on the blue layer I kind of ended up underneath that red right there, that's fine. Okay, green, this is going to want to erase this part of the red right here. Let's go to our red layer, grab the eraser tool, and let's just erase out that bit of the red just like that. And then deselect or control D. So now we have our basic overlapping segments. Starts under and goes over, starts under and goes over, starts under and goes over. So it's kind of looping around just like that. We'll make this whole thing the same color in just a little bit. 
Now come down to this top circle shape. Let's make a duplicate of that. Grab it up here and drag it to the New Layer button. Hide the original. And on this one, let's change the size of this. Click on any control handle and change the size to 85 and hit the green check mark. There we go. It kind of just makes it a little bit smaller. Now you want to put this oh, about like that so that this center point is right in the center of this triangle. I use my arrow keys because you just kind of move that down a little bit. You'll find when it's properly centered that the center here and the center here are almost at the intersections, left and right hand side, and this one is right down from that top triangle. And once you have it in place, you can double check. These three little white triangles should be about the same size and shape. These white pieces should all be about the same size and shape, and these pieces should be about the same size and shape. If you have that, then you're all set. Let's back out just another touch here. There we go. And now the black circle has to go over and under, over and under around this thing. So to do that, notice that all of those are on that same circle. So hold the control key down, click on the icon, and that selects that layer. Let's now start off with the red. We're going to be going over here and under here. So this part has to come out. So go to the red layer, grab the eraser tool, and we're going to just erase right there that little bit. Okay. So we now I have under here, over here, under there, and then over here. We need to erase this bit of the blue. Let's put our blue layer and let's erase that bit out. There we go. That's so over here. Under here is fine. And then over here, we need to erase this bit of the green layer. So let's go to our green layer and let's just erase that bit out. There we are. Okay, so it's over, under, over, under, over, under. If I deselect that, see it a little bit more clearly. So there's the basic Celtic knot shape. Now's a good time to adjust our size on this thing. So I click on the red layer, hold the shift key down, come down to the circle layer right there. They're all selected. And then I'll just drag out the corner and make this a little bit larger. That's kind of like that. And just put it basically centered on the page. If you want to, you can use your arrow keys or cursor keys to adjust the position a little bit. So just about about that size in there. Nothing specific, but about that size. Now that I have all these selected, and I've been they've been resized and they're selected, drag these up to the new layer button, and it gives us a copy of all those layers. Now on this copy set up here, right click and then merge layers. Now one merged layer. I'm only using this just for one thing and that's to get a layer mask. Now to do that, go to the magic wand, make sure that contiguous is unselected right there. Click out here in the white area that selects everything that's transparent on that layer. Now invert that, select inverse and just that shape is selected. There we go. And then click on the new layer mask button right there. You get a layer mask of that shape. That's actually all I need for that piece. Now let's begin working on our coloration for this. I'll go back here to the move tool and let's do a new layer above this layer. There's our new layer. We're going to fill this with a yellow orange. Come down to our colors, click on the color picker, bring this up. And down here where we have the hexadecimal numbers, let's change this to FFD200, FFD200. That's just a nice bright orange right there. Choose OK. And then using the paint bucket, click in here and fill that whole layer with that coloration. And then back to our move tool. Now we can take this layer mask and drag this up one layer and that masks up the background so that this orangey color is only sitting on top of our shapes. We're now done with this layer. You can hide that if you want to or delete that. It's no longer useful. It's only just for that, that one layer mask. Okay, so we have that. Now I want to have this blending with these layers, just the color coming down here and nothing else. So let's go to our blend mode. Make sure you're on the color layer. Blend mode, color. And you should see those in behind. There we go. 
So far so good. Now let's do the metallic part of this. Go here to the top of our layers. That's this red layer. Go to styles, which is down here in elements 15, and it's up at the top up there in Photoshop elements 14 and earlier. Using the Wow Chrome, and in the Wow Chrome, I'm using this one right here, which is the Wow Chrome Shiny Edge. Double click on that, and that adds that kind of a metallic look. Okay, back to our layers. Come down to the green shape layer, back to styles, double click. There it is, back to layers. Come down to the blue layer, back to styles, double click, back to layers. Come down one more, this is our black circle layer, back to styles, double click, and there's a metallic part of this. That's kind of a flat metallic look. I want this more rounded for this effect. So we need to adjust the bevel on this, and also we'll adjust the drop shadow. Let's come up here again to the red layer, our top layer. See a little FX on the right hand side. Double click on that, and that brings up the style settings dialog box. We have our drop shadow and our bevel. In Drop Shadow, set the distance at 47. Just type that in. This brings the drop shadow down. Under Bevel, set the size to 48. Makes it real round looking. And choose OK. We'll do the same thing for these layers. So the green layer, double click on the FX. And distance at 47. And size at 48. Choose OK. Next layer, the blue layer, double click on the FX. Set the distance at 47 on the drop shadow and the size of the bevel at 48. Choose OK. Last layer, the black circle, double click on the FX. Set the distance at 47 and set the size at 48 and choose OK. So that gives us our nice effect in here, kind of a nice rounded metallic, almost a jewelry like effect for those. All we have left to do at this point then is to put our background in here, background coloration. So I come down to the background, let's make a new layer above the background layer right there. Go over here, left hand side, grab the gradient tool, and in here you'll have your foreground to background gradient, which right now should be like this. It should be our orange down to white, foreground to clear, black to white, red to green, and then the next one down right here is violet to orange. That's the one that you want right there. Double click, that sets that. Set the blend style to linear gradient. It's our first button. Click at the upper left hand corner and drag down to the bottom right hand corner. There we go. And there's the background gradient for that. Kind of makes everything pop having that background gradient. Okay, I'm just going to drag this down and float it for a second and enlarge this so you can see this better. There we go. Grab the magnifying tool, zoom tool, and there it is. There's our Celtic knot metallic gold effect, kind of a, a gold jewelry effect here. All built using stuff inside of Photoshop Elements. So there you go, that's how to do a Celtic knot design. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can.